we're on Mial Nahashra in the Mondlioth Mountains and this is we're, we're on the Mondlioth granite and if you look in the um, geology maps on the BGS geology viewer it's described as granite with rafts of the local country rock whatever it is peelite or or semi-peelite or schist so we're actually sitting on one of these rafts of, of semi-peelite behind me you can see the Cairngorm mountains over there which is a large granite and in fact Scotland has over a hundred of these separate granite bodies which are large enough to be on the large-scale geological map so several square kilometers Cairngorm's the largest of them about over 350 square kilometers of those 115 or so granites uh, there are basically five groupings uh, based on their chemistry, their age and some of the aspects of the way that they're intruded. So this Mondlioth granite is part of the Cairngorm series of granites and there's good evidence that at depth they're connected. So there's a large low gravity anomaly that covers all of the, the Cairngorm type granites. Uh, which is indicative of a low density thing at depth, which is a granite. Granite's a low density. So the size of this Cairngorm granite at depth is at least 10 times larger than the, the Cairngorm outcrop itself. So thousands of square kilometers. And that produces a problem of how they come through the crust. Because they're produced by melting in the lower crust, perhaps 30 to 60 kilometers depth. And all of the evidence that we have suggests that they're in place. The top of them are, which is basically what we see, these little granite outcrops, <laughs> little granite outcrops. Uh, those are the high points of the top of this granite batholith, what we call cupolas. And they were intruded to perhaps five kilometers depth below the Earth's surface. So they've come up 50 kilometers or so. How do you get something which is several thousand square kilometers wide? tens of kilometers thick, or at least 10 kilometers thick, up through 50 kilometers of crust. That's a big problem. And the way that the Mondlioth granite is intruded here gives us some evidence of one way that you can do it. So these rafts are uh, produced, these rafts of country rock are produced by dikes coming into the country rock and dissecting it, intersecting dikes, so that blocks of country rock fall down into granite. And that's the modern uh, term for that kind of granite. It's called a stockwork. So that just comes from mining where you have these intersecting veins. In this case, the veins are big dikes of granite. You can see it actually, it's best exposed down in the river, just on the edge of the granite, because here pretty much everything's covered with blanket bog. But if you can imagine that happening at the top of this granite, all of these dikes cutting across, big blocks of country rock become isolated within the granite, so they're isolated from the rest of the country rock. They're denser. I said granite's low density. They're denser, so they sink through the liquid granite. So if you take a block of country rock, start at the top of the the granite body, it gets intruded, all of the rest of it gets dissected, isolated, sinks through to the bottom of the granite, the granite on average has moved up by the height of that little block. So you do that billions of times and the granite moves up through the crust. So that's one way of granite moving through the crust. It's called stoping, another mining term, and it's basically intersecting dikes, isolating blocks of country rock which then fall through the granite because they sink, because they're denser.